Howdy y'all. Just thought I'd talk about uh, buckets and attachments for the Bantam Crane a little bit. A lot of cool history here. So, up front, uh, this is the clamshell bucket. Now this thing's super heavy and that crane will barely handle it. So, you're wondering why did they have this? Well, they had this to unload coke, which was like a hotter burning form of coal that they used to use at the old foundry where they made manhole lids, uh, well casing, you name it. And the way that this worked it was there was two cables and one actually would actuate that pulley and pull these clams together kind of like a cup. And, uh, and then work in reverse to dump it out. Very heavy historical piece of iron and something that I'm very proud of and has a lot of history and relevance to my family. My dad always complained because when he was a kid and he used to help my grandfather uh, over where he worked, uh, the problem with this clamshell bucket is they couldn't get the coke out of the corners of the train cars. There was a railroad spur that came right next to the foundry, and naturally my dad's job was to shovel it into this bucket so that my grandfather could retrieve it. And, uh, of course, come home covered in black soot and coal and dust. Compactor wheel, 36-inch bucket for the backhoe, and an impromptu ripper that we made for our backhoe. Years ago, I remember we had a job with some pretty bad sandstone, and this actually got us through. We were out in front of the shop one night converting this to fit. I think it was for like an old JCB backhoe, and we converted it to fit. Uh, it's been converted to fit in all this Chalmers backhoe, a case backhoe, and then most recently our Cat 420D. But it did get the job done. Over here is our orange peel bucket. This is what is actually on the crane currently. One just like this. And I will demonstrate how that works on a smaller one that I have. This is for a four foot well, four foot well casing, uh, concrete well casing. This one's pretty worn out. Uh, that's why it's not on the crane. Kind of just useful for spare parts at this point. But a cool piece of history. Pretty rare at this point. Not a lot of these are still around. You might be asking, what is this? Well, I'll show you that in just a minute when I explain how the wells were dug. Uh, drag line bucket. So, this drag line bucket uh, also fits on that crane. Grandfather was very good at these. He actually ran a lot of drag lines in the Corps of Engineers up in Alaska. So that may be where he got his proficiency with it. This one in particular is pretty well used. But still a cool piece of history. Cool piece of family history. And basically they call it a drag line because you would attach a cable to the front. And one of the winches on the machine would just pull it towards you. And when it pulled it towards you, those teeth would dig in and it would just fill the bucket up. And to dump it, you'd basically lift the back of the bucket up and dump it right out the front after you've filled it. They use this to dig a lot of um, in very wet material, gravelly, sandy. Uh, he did dig a lot of basements with it. Uh, leach fields for septic systems, things like that. And there's a spare bucket for the Bantam Backhoe that's out front. And this one's homemade. And has had a lot of repairs, so if you think a cable backhoe is not powerful, it's powerful enough to break a bucket. And then that's just a new top for one of those orange peel buckets.
All right, so I was going to demonstrate how the orange peel buckets work. And the clamshell bucket, if you can imagine, works in a very similar fashion, only instead of having four sections like a pie, it only has the two buckets, and then they kind of come together like this. But the orange peel bucket's very unique, and primarily it was used for digging wells, irrigation wells, shallow drinking wells. Traditionally, the water in shallow wells here in Colorado is super hard, so not really safe for consumption necessarily. Just depends on the location and which aquifer you get into. Um, and you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Colorado's way high in the mountains. How in the heck are they digging water wells with that? The funny thing about Colorado is the water uses, just like hydraulics on a machine, the water here has got hydraulic pressure behind it. So uh, pressure from large amounts of water, bring it up into weak points in the soil. And that's how you end up with water at an elevation up on the side of the mountain. Now the way that this works is you hook it up to your both of your lines on your crane and it kind of just grabs like that. So you would drop it into the ground, pull it, it'll dig, swing it, dump it. Now to put in a well you would use a different uh, system. So at the foundry my grandfather worked at they also made precast concrete like this actually small meter pit ring that we <laughs> now use as a fire pit but it's perfect for this demonstration. So the way it would work would be that they would have delivered a bunch of well casing which is basically a concrete ring just like that meter pit right there and The first few well casings would have perforations, which are small holes all the way around it in multiple locations. And they were tapered so that when the water would flow in, they would self-clean. So if they did get kind of plugged up with muck or soot or silt or anything, uh, the water would eventually just flush it out. So the way that this would work would be that a lot of times uh, the clay material where they were digging is super hard in Colorado. So sometimes they would have to bring in the cable backhoe that you saw over there or another machine or something with a ripper to get started. Get down a couple feet, get through the hard pan, and then they would bring out rings like this on a truck. And there was a lift ring that would go in there. There were pins and you could pull it with the lift ring. I actually have one. I should have brought it over for this demonstration, but uh, at any rate, they could pick those rings up. The very first ring that was delivered would have a taper to it. So it had like a cutting edge. And it was straight on the side and tapered. So when it cut, the weight of the ring would go down. It would cut dirt. And then the job of this bucket was to go in the middle and clean it out. And I'll demonstrate that. So they would swing the orange peel bucket over, dig material out, and dump it. And that thing's super heavy, so I don't want to be lifting it too much. But hopefully you understand the concept. And once this material was dug out of there, that ring would, under its own weight, start falling and cutting into the ground. So once it, it went into the ground, uh, it always needed more weight because it had more resistance on the side walls of the trench. So after the first ring, with the cutters was in there, they after the first ring with the cutters was set, they would start adding additional rings on top of that. And the weight would push those into the soil and they would continually clean those out with the orange peel bucket. And they could get I don't know, 15, 20, 30, 40 feet. I think the, the deepest he said was something like 50. Uh, usually encountered groundwater before that. It was always in an area where they knew they were going to have water. And um, you're wondering why they have this little one? Well, 
They also use these buckets to clean out well casing, like on a big 12 inch or 16 or 18 inch well casing. You could stick that bucket down in the well casing and dig out the soot and silt that kind of float in there. Uh, you could also use it to try and retrieve broken <laughs> wells, pumps, or whatever that may have fell in the well. Um, so you may be thinking, well, that's great. But what happens if one of those rings sticks up and it doesn't want to flow down? Well, that is, that is what this is for. And this was used so somebody would ride down the holding line. They'd swing over, set the bucket off, hook that up on the crane. Somebody put their foot in here, hold on to the cable and ride this ring down with a pick or a shovel. And my dad did this often, my grandfather, uh, a lot of people, uh, definitely a long time ago, late for 50s, early 60s. Um, but what would happen is that when the ring would hang up, usually there was a layer of clay or something in there that was keeping it. So they'd hit with a pick all the way around while hanging on to this, and usually over a uh, pit full of water and muck so not a good place to fall and eventually that ring would slide down and both my dad and my grandfather recounted multiple occasions where it was somewhat uh, a little scary when that ring finally gave way and uh, fell in place and the tops of the rings they were kind of tapered they had a lip and there was a male and female side, just like a pipe. This one's flat, so not necessarily a good demonstration. But when they seeded, they would seal. But they don't need to seal perfectly. The idea is to get water in them anyway. And once the well was dug, they were at the depth where it was producing a, a fair amount of water. Uh, of course, they'd make sure it was cleaned out. Then they would dump some inch and a half river rock in the bottom and that river rock helped separate the pump and from uh, all the silt and things that would accumulate in the bottom of the well and then they could pump that well and and use it for irrigating uh, there's still some in use today that my grandfather dug uh, around the metro area in denver and there was a restaurant in uh, commerce city one or two of them that I recall that used these wells. Like I said, drinking water was different in different locations depending on where you put the well. Now, they did do some of these wells up in the mountains. Um, they did them all over. But I want to say the last one that they probably dug was in the late 70s, early 80s. And that's about the time that that... Uh, crane machine the bantam truck crane was licensed uh the last time and i do remember seeing this as a child and watching them dig one of these wells up in the mountain and it was a uh, very unique and uh kind of a fun experience and something that is uh at the time i i wasn't that enthralled with it i really loved the trucks i was just enamored by the six by six trucks but this whole process, is, I've grown to love it and understand it and um, realize how unique and special it actually was. And I hope this demonstration is just something that can be passed on so people can see how the old ways were and the things that we did to help build America and uh, some of the risks that they took. I do want to thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.